Hey everybody, Michael at iBlock. Today we're inside our damper department. So we'll start by looking at how we make our shafts and our tubes. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our big lengths of tubing and cut them to length for each shock. So after we've cut them to length, the next thing we're gonna do is close the ends. We have two main processes for that. The first one here is an induction heated closing. So we're gonna heat the end red hot and then we're gonna come in with a mandrel and close that. You can see that here. So once the ends are closed, we wanna pressure test each and every tube so we can make sure that there are no leaks before we finish welding and finishing the tubes. The other way that we can close the tubes is by welding a cap on. So we use a TIG lathe weld here and you can see that process. So once we made sure the tubes are good, then they can come to these two processes. One of them is an ID clip groove that's gonna hold in our seal head when we assemble them. And the other is an OD clip groove that we can use to put a spring seat on to hold the spring on the vehicle. So the tubes are closed. They have an ID groove and an OD groove. Now we need to put a finished end on it. So depending on the shock, you can get a loop, a stem, and each one varies for every application. So we have a robot welder here. You can see we'll set them up in the fixtures. Right now we're doing loops and it'll go in and weld a nice speed on each side of that loop. So once the shocks are complete, we've cut the ID groove, the OD groove, we welded the loop on. They're gonna go to an outside process to get the zinc coating. And then once they come back, they're gonna go to the honer right behind us. So we're gonna ball hone them, get them nice and smooth and uniform so the shock operates perfectly. So we'll grab the raw material from the rack, load it into the bar feeder, and begin to turn the ends that we need for the ends of the shaft. Once the shafts are machines, they'll make their way inside, and then we can start assembling the piston assemblies. Use the provided drawings here. We'll put our seal head on, our piston, and the valving for the application. So the completed zinc bodies make their way back here, as well as the piston assemblies that we just saw. And here we can assemble them. So it's gonna vacuum out all of the air, it's gonna put just nitrogen in, it's gonna sink your separator piston and fill the rest with oil without any air gaps at the top and assemble the clip so out pops a fully assembled shock. From there, we'll put each and every shock on the dyno. That ensures that all the shocks that you're getting are perfectly matched left to right, batch after batch after batch. First step of the finishing process is to press our bump stop cap onto the shock. From there, we'll stamp a part number, date code, and apply a sticker to each and every shock. The part number and date code allow us to look back at product tracking in the future if needed. So the last step for these is torquing the rod end on, and then we've got a completed shock ready to go in a box and ship. Thanks for joining us for an episode of Inside iBox. Let us know in the comments below which department we should do next.